What is uh, really exciting to hear the voices in the room without the acoustic panels. I don't know if you were charged by that. I definitely was just hearing all of you guys praising God together. Uh, we have uh, so many exciting things that we're working on, but one of the things that we're working on for you and our, uh, I are our finances, and I know that that is a tricky and difficult subject for a lot of us. But I don't think money is an issue. Think about this for a moment. How many of you would be upset, ticked off, or frustrated if somebody wanted to give you money? So money's not the issue. How we spend it is the issue. And who's charging us or taking it from us. And so we've been in this series called Entrusted because we have each been entrusted by God. The things that we have, even the people in our life, are a gift and a blessing from God. And we understand that He is the giver of all good things. And when we have that perspective, it drastically changes how we spend our our money. Well, how we spend His money. Right? Because we're stewards, that means a manager of somebody else's wealth. Now, if you trusted somebody else to manage your estate, you would probably have some fairly high expectations. One of them might be that you could have uh, income to last over the next few years, and if they suddenly showed up one day in a Ferrari, and the next week you find out that you actually have half as much money as you thought you had, you would probably be a little agitated. The cool thing is, in everything about money, we learn from Scripture that God cares more about our heart than He does our finances. But our finances are a really big indicator of where our heart is at. So it's not just in how much we drop in an offering plate or around here in a little trash can. Our guys love to talk about that. We're going to replace those, by the way. You won't be able to say that. You can start saying mailboxes. But we're going to to bring back and give to God. And it's not just about that. It's how we're using what we've been given, our time, our treasures, and our talents, and investing them in the kingdom and not being self-absorbed by the things that we have. Last week, we kind of talked about this. Who are you serving? Are you serving your money, your debt, your stuff, or are you serving God? Because when you serve God, it frees up those resources to be used for His glory. And today we're going to be talking about who are you blessing? Right? Who are you, you blessing with the resources that God has given you? And I want to talk about a couple of initiatives that have happened through the Life of Connection Christian Church. So the first one we still utilize, actually all of them get used to some capacity, but it's just bringing faith to life. Have you seen that tagline anywhere? Bringing faith to life? I want to tell you a little bit about the origins if you don't know. Uh, When my family and I first moved here at the beginning of 2014, and we started asking people about their church experience in Columbus and Uh, what was missing from some of the different faith communities, one of the things that we heard over and over again is Columbus is a very religious community. But sometimes there's a disconnect between what's taught in church and what's practiced in life. And so we developed this mantra that whatever we say and do, we want to do it in a way that brings faith into everyday life. So whether it's the way that we communicate so that people can understand it, we put it down where we can all grasp it, or it's just making sure that it's super practical because most all of us, we get thrown off when somebody professes faith and then does something different. But we don't oftentimes take the time to look in a mirror and realize when we're the ones that are doing things that don't measure up with the things that we profess. And so how do we bring faith to life? One of the ways that we bring faith to life is making sure that we are good stewards of the blessings God has given us and we use them to bless other people. We are the most forgiven, most generously loved people. For those of us who already have a relationship with Christ and we understand that He has died in our place and He has given us the capacity to do all of the things that we can do. So we should therefore be generous with the way that we give. 
And as we generously love other people, the really cool thing is that's an act of worship towards God. God is blessed by the way that we serve other people, the way that we use the blessings for his kingdom. He says that in Mark chapter 12 this way, that the first and most important commandment is to love the Lord your God with all of your heart, soul, mind, and strength. But the second is like it, love your neighbor as you love yourself. So when we love our neighbor, we're actually loving God. But think about it this way. When we profess to love God and we don't love our neighbor, we're also not worshiping God. We're not loving God. We're not giving him the priority that he deserves in our life. And so we're going to see this whole thing kind of play out in a passage of Scripture called 2 Corinthians chapter 9. If you're following along in the Black Bibles we provide, it's page 968. So the Apostle Paul is writing a, a letter to the church in Corinth. And the church in Corinth has got a lot of different issues that they're struggling with, one of which is favoritism, rich versus poor. And so he does talk a little bit about money as it relates to that kind of a topic. And in chapter 9, starting in verse 6, it talks about abounding in every good work. Chapter 9, verse 6, page 968. The point is this, whoever sows sparingly will also reap sparingly, and whoever sows bountifully will also reap bountifully. Now, some of you have an agricultural mindset, and you know exactly what that means. But for a lot of us, we have to understand a little bit about it, and the idea is that you're throwing seed, and as you're throwing it, the more that you throw out, the more that you plant, the more plants that will grow, and the more seeds that will come of the things that you plant. So in the corn husker state, if we throw out a lot of corn, we will probably get a lot of corn plants, which will produce a lot of ears of corn. Are you tracking? If we don't throw out a lot of corn, and we go to the same field and we go, oh, what happened? Where did all the corn go? How come we didn't grow any corn? Because you didn't plant enough, dummy, right? You have to sow more so that you can reap more. And if you don't, you will not. And so whoever sows sparingly will also reap sparingly. But what's this got to do with our finances? Well, he says in verse 7, Each one must give as he has decided in his heart, not reluctantly or under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver. That means he wants it to come from our hearts. He wants us to give not because we have to, not because somebody's mandating it, not because we're getting a letter saying you owe this much, but because we really want to, and why do we want to? Because we've been richly blessed. And God is able to make all grace abound to you, so that having all sufficiency in all things at all times, you may abound in what? In every good work. Did you hear anything about money right there? No, we're, we're sowing the good works. So that we're reaping the blessings. It's not just about what we give financially, though it is what we give financially. It's also about the things that, that we do for other people. And when we, we do that, it says, He has distributed freely. He has given to the poor. His righteousness endures forever. Another thing that we have used around here before is ICU. ICU, it just means this, that if you see somebody going above and beyond what they typically do, you can throw them an ICU. Now we have before stuck it on a little bit of a board and you can read the different things, but let me tell you one of the most impactful ways that this helps out. You just see somebody doing something and you send them a text, maybe you drop them a message on social media, or maybe you just stick a card on their window or something. And all you have to say is, hey, I see you. And if it's somebody from connection, right, then we begin to hear this language and we go, oh yeah, they saw me doing something good for somebody else. But here's the really cool thing. God sees the things that nobody else sees. And so it helps to make us mindful that regardless of what we say or do, that there is a God in heaven who sees you. Right? And when you do them for Him then the reward is so much greater than when you do it for people here. We've also got one 
This one hasn't been used a lot recently, but it's Sandman. Everybody say Sandman. Okay, this is not Metallica, so I know some of you are getting excited. Sandman is see a need, right? How many of us have, have the ability to see things around us that need to get done? How many of us live in a house where you wish other people had the ability to see a need that needs to get done? Right? How many of you work in a place that you wish other people would just see a need that needs to get done? How many of us have walked past things that we've seen that need to be done? I did not. We have a baby in our house now. I did not smell a thing. (laughs) Oh, he's dirty? No idea. Right? There are things that you and I walk right past the trash can, even though it's overflowing. Surely that next thing will fit in there. And the next person, it'll be kind of like a Jenga tower. The next person, when they place that last piece of trash, the whole thing will just collapse and they will take the trash out. And you live by yourself and you're realizing you are that person. right? Whatever the case might be. But when we see a need, we meet a need. Sandman. We see a need and we meet a need. So as believers in Christ, uh, in Paul's letter to Timothy, he says it this way, work wholeheartedly as if you're serving God and not man. And so when you and I see a need, and then we rise up and we meet the need because of, of the joy in our heart to give to people because we love them and we love God, it's a radically different kind of an offering that we're bringing before Him. And we can come back to this question, who are we blessing? with our good deeds? Who are we blessing with the financial resources that we have? How many of you uh, were able to experience uh, about 20 inches of snow over the last month? Anybody here experienced that? Anybody still experiencing that? How many of us had the opportunity to go next door and shovel for somebody else? Maybe we take that... Piece of equipment that kind of moves snow without the, <clears throat> and we have an opportunity to continue on down the sidewalk. I'm blessed to be in a neighborhood where it's like uh, an army of snow blowers that just kind of <sighs> right through, and things happen. But I just I can't help but think as I'm driving through, what would it be like if every believer in the Columbus area took the time to take care of somebody that was next to them. And all of the things, the complaints that we're hearing on social media about roads not being clear and driveways and sidewalks, if we all just picked up a shovel or a snowblower and went out a little bit more and did a little bit more, then we would actually take care of a lot of things. And And see, that's, that's, that's my vision, that's our heartbeat is that Connection Christian Church isn't a group of people that gathers for an hour on Sunday morning. But there were an army of God unleashed on a community of people that need the love of God in action. Amen? We need to be the church in action. If all we do is we gather here and we open up Bibles, we drop off our kids for an hour, dig in a little bit, sing some songs and raise a hand and we leave unchanged, we have accomplished nothing. Nothing. And we need to be an army of God that is unleashed on a community that's lost in darkness, that needs the light of Christ. And one of the ways that we do that is that we love on them through acts of service. See a need, meet a need. And when you see a fellow brother or sister in Christ just being able to say, hey, I see you. I saw what you were doing there. Good job. Good job. Let's continue reading. Verse 10. He, God, who supplies seed to the sower, that means all that corn that you were throwing out, the only reason you got is because God allowed you to have it. And He supplies to the sower and bread for food will supply and multiply your seed for sowing and increase the harvest of your righteousness. Sometimes we don't sow. Sometimes we don't give. Sometimes we don't serve because we figure, hey, I don't have enough time I don't have enough resources. I don't have the capacity to do that. And one of the crazy things is whenever we get self-absorbed, when we start turning things inward, it actually works against us. We think that we're saving more, that we're, we're building up more. Go back to last week's message and listen to 
Uh, the, the little bit, if you can, the audio was kind of bad online. I understand that. Uh, the idea that we have a God who supplies, and when we store it up for ourselves, it just can come crumbling down. But when we give, when we serve, the giver of all, all the things, things that we've already given away replenishes us. It's like living water. I mean, maybe I've heard that someplace before. That, that it's not like we give and we don't get. We, we give and He gives. And we give and He gives. And that's an amazing thing when we're in, in God. God. You will be enriched in every way to be generous in every way. You will be enriched from whom? God. So that you can be what? Generous. In every way. Guys, there should not be a people group on earth that is more generous than the church. There should not be anyone who's out giving God. Because the fact of the matter is that you and I, as much as we want to, we cannot out give God. And at some point in time, you will put God to the test, and some of you already have, and you will realize that He pours back into you. And you'll go, how does this make sense? I've given more and I've gotten more. It doesn't add up. That's because you're serving the giver of all good things. By the, excuse me, verse 12. For the ministry of this service is not only supplying the needs of the saints, it's yours, right? But is also overflowing in many thanksgiving to God. When we love God's people, we're actually thanking God. God for loving us. By their approval of this service, that's the people, they will then glorify God because of your submission that comes from your confession of the gospel of Christ and the generosity of your contribution for them and for others while they long for you and pray for you because of the surpassing grace of God upon you. Thanks be to God for His inexpressible gift. When you serve other people in the love of God, not only are you praising God, but the people are seeing God in you and they are praising God and you. It's amazing kind of a domino effect that we have when we we offer our lives as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. When we serve and bless other people with the blessings that we have. I take you also to a passage that's found in Matthew. I'm not going to read it in great detail, but it's Matthew chapter 25, and it's on page 830 in the Bibles we provide. And the question I want to ask you is this, are you hiding or are you investing? Are you hiding or are you investing? So... A wealthy landowner is getting ready to leave. And he finds three employees to entrust things to. Okay, now the way that we read it in Scripture, it says one was given five talents. Okay, that's a measure of money. Another was given two talents. And a third was given one one talent. Each according to their ability. Some have a capacity to handle more things than others, and it doesn't really matter because God gives us according to what we can do and what He's designed us to be able to accomplish. The question is, what will we do with what He's invested us with? And so this wealthy landowner leaves, and after quite a bit of time, he comes back. Now, did he give his resources to those individuals? He did not. He entrusted them to manage the resources which is way different. Now, the worst possible scenario would be that you lost it. The second worst would be that you're just like, okay, here it is. I kept it in a safe. It was underneath my mattress, whatever. Here you go, have it back. But we understand that we could put something in even just a basic savings savings account is probably going to draw a little bit of interest over that period of time. If we use it and invest it in other resources, we could probably increase that that return a little bit more. So he comes comes back back and the one with five makes five more. Bravo, well done, my good and faithful servant. The one with two makes two more. 
he too is praised for the work that he's done. But the one who had one just went and buried it. And so he went and grabbed the shovel, dug dug it it up, brought it back in. And he was called a wicked and lazy servant. And all he did was give God back or give the, the owner back what he was entrusted with. And some, some of, of us, we've been entrusted with, with, with something, something so amazing, the generosity of God, the love of God, any financial resources, any family that we've got, any job that we've got, has all been a gift to, from us or for us from God. And we have the opportunity to pay it forward. So will we just receive it or will we give it? Will we, will we hide those treasures so nobody else can see our talents and our abilities because they're just for us? Or we've spent all, all week working, so therefore we, we don't really want to go above and beyond. This is my time. Or do we let it shine? Do we invest it into other people? The cool thing is we can invest it into our kids, into our grandkids, into our coworkers, into our, our classmates at school. Everywhere that we go in our neighborhood, we invest the blessings God has given us and we pay it forward to the people around us And in doing so, it's a thanksgiving to God, and it's an opportunity for those people to see God in action through us. The flip is also true, right? If we don't do that, if you just come home, pull in your garage, shut the garage door, go in your house, make yourself a meal, sit down and chill, get up in the morning, get your stuff, out the door you go, through the garage... Nobody is seeing your light shine at all. What will it take for the church to be the army of God that it's unleashed to shine the light of Christ through acts of service? Well, I can't answer that for you. But I I do think that once we, we get that accomplished, we'll see these words, we'll hear them echoed in our life. Well done, my good and faithful servant. You have been faithful with a little, and I will set over you over much. Enter into the joy of the Master. This is something that we want to hear and receive. So guys, my challenge to us is really just to give more. More generously. More appreciatively. Serve other people when you see a need. What does Sandman mean? See a need? Meet a need. See a need? Turn your back? No. See a need? Hope somebody else accomplishes it? No. We see a need, and we what? Meet a need. When we see somebody rising up to meet a need, what do we do? I see you. Right? We encourage other people as they're going along. And we remember that we, you and I, cannot outgive God. And so who is it that we're blessing by giving them a little Jesus as we live? I want you to think about this for a moment. This is your next next step. step. Okay? What is it that you need to do for somebody else in your world? Who is it in your life that needs to see the love of Jesus in action? Receive that imprint right now. Who's God God calling you to serve? serve. What do you need to do? How are you going to put your faith in action today and the rest of your life? Because if you do this right, guys, it's not about what you do. It's about who you are. Let me say that again. It's not about what you do. It's about who you are. And once God has grabbed a hold of your heart, you don't have to ask. You just see needs and meet needs. Maybe not perfectly, but you get better. I just told my wife recently, and I think this maybe came up in our small group, I should have been really smart and used this snowstorm as an opportunity to go buy a new snowblower and then start charging people going down the road and I would have paid for my snowblower. But I can't. I can't. Like, I would physically be out all day snowing, uh, uh, snowblowing everybody's driveway and trying to get out of there as quick as I can without them seeing me. Because that's just who I am. Who are you? Who are you blessing?
Father, we thank you for working in our life because we know that through the love of Jesus Christ, we have all been blessed tremendously. When, when we were lost, hurting, without hope. And Father, I know that there are people here today who are still there. They're struggling with a lot of different things in their life. And they're looking for a little light and a little hope. May they see it in your church family. So much so that they begin to bring the praise back to you and it overflows with thanksgiving to you and blessings to your church family around the world. That as we go into the world and we shine this light, that we bring faith to life in real and practical ways. That whether they encounter us in our workplace or in our neighborhoods, they know there's something different. They know that there's a heart that's there. And Father, I, be, I pray that you begin to work in our lives in such a way that we can speak truth into them, not just serve them, but speak truth into them and give them a reason for the hope that we have in Jesus Christ. That we would serve wholeheartedly as if we're serving you and not just the people you've placed around us. And Father, we just ask that as a, as a church family, Connection Christian Church, when we reach out beyond these walls, and I know that we will, and Father, to connect people in this Columbus area to Jesus Christ, help us to remember we're connecting them to the giver of all good things. We're not selling them on anything. We're not guilt tripping them into anything. We're introducing them to the greatest blessing in their life. And an opportunity they have to have hope and healing in the hands of Jesus. Father, if there's anybody here today that needs to know about that hope a little bit more deeply. If they're ready to step out in faith and say, yes, I believe that, that Jesus is the Son of God. That He has died for me. That He so generously loved me when I've been hurting and lost and hopeless. Father, would you just receive them in? And as we pause to celebrate this death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus through a time we call communion. Father, would you help us all just to, to, to be able to focus on the life that was given to us at the cross. May that be our fuel, our source to continue to pass it on to pay it forward and to encounter other people with the same love that we've received. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. If you're ready to make a decision today to make Jesus front and center in your life, please come find me. Let's talk. If, if today is a day where you've decided, hey, I've been, I've been more of a receiver than a giver. I've been more of a life taker in asking other people to serve me than I have been a life giver. This is an opportunity to step into a new future, a new you, and claim this new identity in Christ. And we want to bless you as you're coming forward, and we have no doubt that God will not bless you as you do so. As he says, put me to the test. So around the room, you're going to find these little buckets, and those are a good place to put your contributions if you'd like to. Remember, it's all his anyway. We're just putting him to the test and praising him for what he's already done. And so thank you for doing that, uh, supporting the ministry of connection, helping us in the mission to reach people in the Columbus area for Christ, but more so for trusting God in all things.